Hey guys, welcome to NXT Review. I'm your host, Boise, and let's get straight on with it. This is NXT! So we kicked off the show with Cassie S.O. now taking on Connor Reeves. And this was a really decent match for one reason. One, Reeves got beaten up, which is always good. And that shows how much Reeves is a really good heel if you just want to see him get the crap kicked out of him. And Cassie S.O. now cut a fantastic promo after beating him. No, no messing about. Punch down. There we go. It was a very quick match. It, it lasted about two, three minutes. Uh, but Cassius Ono's promo afterward was fantastic. Talked about how there was a lot of buzz when he returned, how that disappeared, and now that there's, he realizes new people are going to come to NXT. So he's going to be the first person to welcome them and knock them out. I thought it was really well put together. Good character development. So I'm going to mark this as 7 out of 10. Worth watching just for the promo alone. Cassius Ono, just brilliant. Next up, we got the Street Profits. Versus the Forgotten Sons. Now the Forgotten Sons have been in NXT for some time now, but they've only been doing live shows. This is their first te televised uh, debut, and yeah, they were really intimidating. They kind of remind me of a mixture of Sanity and the Wyatts. Um, but I, I, once the character gets more flushed out on TV, I can't wait to see what they bring to the table. But very much an interesting faction to have in the new NXT landscape. Uh, Street Profits look like they were about to get the victory, which, you know, makes sense. They are so over. Uh, before some hooded thieves stole the Street Profits Cup, uh, that caused uh, Montez to try and catch them. Did capture one of them, and it was one of the mighty. Uh, they disappeared after one of the Forgotten Sons members took him out. Chucked him in the ring while the referee was distracted. Obviously, the referee is always distracted. This allowed the mighty, uh, the forgotten, to get the victory. Altogether, this continues the storyline between the Street Profits and the mighty, which is good. And it gives the forgotten sons a victory, a cheap victory, but they got the victory nonetheless. I really like this. It's a good way to introduce a new tag team, a new faction into NXT. So for me, and there was a busted nose, by the way. There was a busted nose, and that looked fucking awesome. Uh, so I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. Next up, we did get the new NXT Women's Champion, Kyrie Sane, taking on new NXT signing, Trish Adora. I'm sorry if I butchered the last name, I'll just call you Trish, um, but she was, this was a really good match, uh, Trish is a former rugby player, military soldier, who's now a wrestler, who signed up with NXT, and Kyrie Sane is just goddamn over, isn't she, she is our pirate princess champion, oh I love that, I love that, um, Kyrie really had a, you know, it was kind of a quick match, but it really kind of sold what Kyrie's about, she might ha struggle against bigger, more powerful opponents, but sh her aggressive style and her termination really wins over the match. And that's what she did last night. She beat her opponent, who's much bigger, with the insane elbow, got the victory, and afterwards was the more, that was the meat of this bit. Now, it was that former NXT Women's Champion, Shayna Baszler, returned to NXT to, to say, look, I'm coming back for my title. This was great, Kyrie Sane looked like she was going to get the crap kicked out of her by Baszler, who's a much powerful, more dangerous opponent. Um, but no, Kyrie speared uh, Baszler out. It was awesome to see. Really good chemistry. I love the chemistry between these two. So this 8 out of 10, really well put together. Cannot wait to see the next time these two take each other in the ring. And this moves us on to the main event of NXT, and that was the Velveteen Dream versus Johnny Gongano. And this was a hell of a match. I, it's one of those matches you go, why is this not on a takeover? It was that good, but it just shows you the caliber of wrestlers they have on NXT right now, where they can put a match like this on the show, and just the crowd go crazy. And Really, really well put together. Great storytelling as well by Johnny Gungai. He's selling, he's fantastic. Velveteen Dream, better and better. Every time I watch him, he is getting better. And that's an impressive uh, feat for someone that young in the wrestling industry. Uh, Johnny Gungano 
had that tortured soul storyline where he looked at the there was a kid in the crowd with a Johnny Gargano a hat, shirt and sign for Johnny and it was like he was trying to not turn into Champa, which you could tell it which was going on uh, it looked like he had the victory he did look like he held he held Velveteen Dream in uh, the Gongano lock outside the ring referees telling him to get back in he's splitting between hit he's his good side his bad side Velveteen Dream eggs him on to try and finish the match he gets the victory Velveteen Dream wins Johnny Gangano is crawling out of the ring. This is after the match. Big victory for Velveteen Dream. Brilliant match. But it was what happened afterwards. Johnny's walking. He, he crawls out of the ring. The crowd is split. Johnny wrestling. Johnny failure. Interesting how quickly the you know full sale crowd has turned on Johnny Gangano. And it's a bit of a shame. I'm a massive Johnny Gangano fan. So I can't see myself turning on him. But if he turns heel. This would be really good storytelling right now. He's turned into the man he hates the most. And this is a really good storytelling environment. Right now in NXT. Uh, Johnny kept on looking back. There were crowds chanting his name. Chanting Johnny Fairley. Johnny Wrestling. It was just brilliant. I can't wait to see where this goes. For all this involved I'm gonna give this a 9 out of 10. We did get some backstage parts as well on the show we got a um, William Regal interviewing Heavy Machinery. We found out they're the ones who give the footage to William Regal that's big information and they did say look there is something on the tape which was we saw which wasn't on the tape and that was Champa was in the bushes next to Alistair Black. Interesting. Um, Lars Sullivan was also interviewed. He said, look, I w I'm not going to lie, I was looking for Alistair, but someone beat me to the punch, which makes like, could it is believable, because I, I think Lars would be that guy who would admit he took out Alistair Black. Uh, this really evolves the storyline even more. I can't wait to see how how much further they're going to take this, but it's Let's let's get start getting some more information. Let's start getting some more juicy bits. Um, but yes, the little segments we did get were very interesting. We also got a backstage uh, video from our NXT champion Tomasa Champa, who said, "There's no one. There's no one around. There's no number one contender. I am the man on top of the mountain, the last man standing. So that's why I'm not, not on the TV on TV right now. I'm waiting for a challenger. That's really cool. That I thought that was a really good interview." Um, but yeah, really well put together this episode of NXT. I really enjoyed everything which was part of it. So I'm going to give this episode an 8 out of 10. Well done NXT. Uh, what was your favourite part? Put it in the comments below. If you do like our videos, please like, subscribe and press the notification to keep up to date. And if you want to follow the channel, you can do it it's at Smack Talk YouTube. That's Smack Talk YouTube. Uh, why did I say that? Why did I say it like that? Uh, and if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do it it's at Boys E88. And there you go, guys. I'll see you guys next time on Smack Talk Wrestling Reviews.